Remember when the Spongebob movie came out? Many of my classmates saw it right away, so it was the talk of the school very soon after its release. Sadly, I was unable to see it as quickly as everyone else, but that didn't deter me from contributing to the conversations. This is because I had the AWE PC version of the game, which came out before the movie hit the theaters. I thought this was all I needed to understand the story. So you can imagine my surprise when I actually did see the movie and there wasn't a scene where Spongebob solved a political conflict with a chiropractor. That aside, the Spongebob movie was great and so were the games that were based on it. I didn't have any consoles at the time, so I was late to try out the movie game most people are familiar with. I liked it, but I developed far more nostalgia for the PC version. In my opinion, it might actually be the best Spongebob computer game. But oddly enough, it wasn't the only Spongebob movie game released for the PC. In 2004, another one would be released on the 3D Groove Engine. This would come to be known as the Spongebob Squarepants Movie 3D Game. Kinda strange since the other two movie games were also 3D, but okay. Games on the 3D Groove Engine were created mostly for the sake of advertising big franchises like Spongebob or other Nickelodeon shows. Some were alright, others were weird, but it had a nice little selection to choose from. Time has left 3D Groove little more than a distant memory, but the games are still accessible through various means online. So let's take a look at their adaptation of the Spongebob Squarepants movie. One of the first things you might notice is that the game uses music and voice clips from the actual show. It's interesting that such a small game from 2004 was able to secure the rights to use them. Nickelodeon can be very particular when it comes to giving those out. In the opening cutscene, we see King Neptune's daughter Mindy giving Spongebob and Patrick a little rundown of what they have to do. She also served as a mission giver in the console game, so maybe this was intentional. Also, get used to these faces, you'll be seeing them for basically the entire game. Many old Nickelodeon games lack the budget for more than one facial expression. So remember how in the movie, Spongebob needed to find King Neptune's crown? Well in this, King Neptune has an infinite number of crowns and they're scattered all over the ocean. Gosh, imagine having that many crowns and losing every single one of them. You're given the paddy wagon to drive around in as you crash into absolutely everything you see in order to knock the crowns out of them. The crowns act as your in-game currency. Now as soon as I saw this was a driving game, my heart sank a little. Not because I hate driving games, but because I'm inconceivably terrible at them. I never actually beat all the driving stages in the console game. Some of the first things you can hit are trash cans outside Patrick's Rock. This is actually accurate to the show. Remember in Naughty Nautical Neighbors? He had trash cans outside his house in that episode. I guess he got rid of them because giant sandwiches kept running them over. One of the first things you can do is drive up to Mr. Krabs, who gives you a mission. For the price of 50 crowns, you can run this race where you have to reach the Krusty Krab before time runs out. It's a little hard, and if you fail, you've just wasted all those crowns on nothing. More on this later. You can drive around town, hitting everything you see and going over ramps for some neat tricks. If you knock over enough of the same object, you'll get bonus points. The more crowns you collect, the more minigames you'll unlock, which will then give you crowns as a reward to unlock more minigames. All in all, it's a vicious cycle. You might find yourself wondering if you collect the crowns to play the minigames, or if you play the minigames to collect the crowns. Still, Bikini Bottom is fairly nice to drive around. There's a lot to see and many locations to visit. You can visit places from the movie and complete the minigames for crowns, but you can also enjoy the scenery. What's interesting is that Spongebob and Patrick continually drop quotes from the show even if they don't fit the context. Before we get to the minigames, let's look at some of these locations. You can drive through jellyfish fields where, oh my gosh, this game not only allows you to run over innocent animals with your car, it encourages it. This is the secret ending of the Jellyfish Jam episode they didn't want you to see. You can also go to Goo Lagoon, and believe me, this is the best spot to drive around and farm those crowns. There are so many things you can run over, you can easily work up a decent crown balance just from going here alone. You can also drive on the water to hit life preservers. You are invincible in this game. Another thing I like is that once you've taken the crown from an object, you can still run into it and send it flying. Also, remember Thug Tug? Well, have you ever wanted to drive over it like a ramp? Well, I got good news for you. Whoa, whoa, okay, we glitched it, we glitched it. You can also go to Sand Mountain and drive into hooks, though they're really hard to hit. I should also mention this mechanic where you can make Spongebob and Patrick switch seats while driving. There really isn't any point to it, it's just kind of cool. After you've collected enough crowns, you're able to take on some of the more expensive challenges. 
At Thug Tug, Dennis of all characters introduces you to the mission. The very same Dennis that Plankton hired to murder Spongebob and Patrick. One, why is he explaining Thug Tug etiquette to you? In the movie, it didn't seem like he and the guys from the bar had the best relationship. Secondly, he seems a little too relaxed with the way he talks to you. He even introduces himself as Dennis the Hitman. Could you imagine meeting someone new and they just reach out for a handshake and say, Nice to meet you, I'm John the Hitman. Thirdly, why isn't he trying to kill you? Isn't that his whole character's deal? If it isn't, then what's his purpose in this game? Is he just some guy who happens to be a hitman? I guess that's how it is in real life. You never know who among you is working for the mob. Unless they introduce themselves that way. Anyway, you have to pop bubbles in the bathroom so the thugs don't think you're a bubble-blowing baby. Patrick dances in the background, too. It goes on forever until you lose, setting the standard for half the minigames in this adventure. Half of them are racing, either against an opponent or a timer, and the other half are clicking simulators. Once you beat Mr. Krabs' original mission, you find out right there on the spot that Spongebob will not be the manager for the Krusty Krab 2. They also misspelled surprise, but I'm not sure if it's intentional because they put it in quotation marks. But since Spongebob didn't get the job as manager, he wants to drown his sorrows in ice cream, so you have to follow this trail of triple gooberberry sunrises to Goofy Goober's ice cream party boat. The ice cream gives you a
It's always nice to revisit the era of the Spongebob movie and revisit games like this one and the other adaptations. This movie and everything related to it had a role in the childhoods that shaped who many of us are today. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.